Hi, Steve Gordon here, your friendly neighborhood Westminster carpet patching specialist. If you need any help at all with your carpet patching situation, you've come to the right place. I made this recording to answer all your most frequently asked questions on patching carpet. And if you need any more information, we're here on the phone, so give us a call. Um, I'll be waiting for that. I hope you call. We'd love to come out and fix your carpet for you. And until we hear from you, enjoy the recording. Here you go. Hi, Steve Gordon here, your friendly neighborhood carpet repair guy. And I promise you one thing, and that is I'm absolutely not an actor. So if you're looking for an actor to talk about carpet repair, you've come to the wrong place. But if you want to know about carpet repair, whether it be carpet stretching, patching, Berber carpet repair, commercial carpet repair, uh, transitions between your carpet and the floor, maybe your stairs need repaired, a seam could need repaired, or a few other things, well, in that case, you have come to the right place because I'm going to talk to you about that. And I'm going to try to answer as many of your most frequently asked questions as possible. Um, and before I get to that, I am going to talk to you a little bit about our guarantee, how to get an estimate, um, the bid, and a couple other details. So I hope you enjoy my recording and please be patient with me because I don't have a script. I've got a, a dozen notes here to go off of and it's just going to be right off the top of my head and uh, try to really just answer all the questions I can ahead of time so that you have a little bit of education when you call us and I certainly hope you do. So first, I'd like to talk about the guarantee. When you call us, you're going to get a 100% unlimited unconditional lifetime labor guarantee. And what I mean by that is that either you or your carpet or both are going to be completely, absolutely, and thoroughly worn out before you ever have to pay to have that carpet fixed again. So again, 100% unlimited unconditional lifetime labor guarantee, that's forever. Um, how you get your estimate in the first place is after you watch this recording, Give us a call here at the office, and we're going to give you something like a phone guesstimate. We'll give you an idea of what you might expect to pay. We might tell you something like between 150 and 300, or we might say between 2 and 400, or something like that. We're not going to know exactly, or even not even all that close, how much it's going to cost to have, it, uh, have us fix your carpet for you. So if you feel like we're in the right sort of price range, then we're going to schedule an appointment to come on out and actually give you an absolutely free, no obligation bid. At that point, if you feel the bid is fair, and I'm sure you will because it's our business model to give you a fair price so that we could do the job right then and there all in one trip. We would really love to just do it in one trip. Now, I understand that sometimes you need to get a bid on one trip and then come back at a different time, have us come back at a different time to actually do the work. But by and large, it's normally best to just get it all done all in one trip. And that's how we'll give you the best price as well. After all, uh, driving out to your place once is going to be less expensive for both of us than it would be to drive out to your place two or more times. Now, um, another thing about the absolutely free, no obligation bid is at that point, we're going to actually have an opportunity to see the work. We're going to see exactly what needs to be done because you see, when you call us on the phone, even though you think you've explained the situation thoroughly, it, it's very likely that either myself or one of my assistants here that helps me answer the phone won't really understand exactly what we're dealing with until we actually see it. And so that's why we really do want to come out and give you a bid in person. And by the way, if you don't like the bid, if you don't think it's fair, we're going to walk away absolutely empty-handed and that makes us sad so sad because we want to be out there we want to fix your problem and put a check in our pocket and go off to the next one after all this is what we do for a living this is how we feed our families um, speaking about money please don't pay cash we uh, would really prefer that you pay with a check made out to creative carpet repair or um, use a credit card you can call in the office with a credit card so cash, is, it's against the agreement I've made with all my contractors. Now, if you work with me directly, if I'm the actual contractor that shows up to your house and you want to pay me cash, I'm happy to take it. But for any other contractor throughout my entire company, please don't pay cash. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the carpet repairs. I've got a little bit of housekeeping out of the way. 
Let's talk about carpet stretching. Most people wonder why their carpet is all rippled up. So if you look out at your carpet and you see more waves than the, the ocean, or it's more rippled up than you can believe, and there's peaks and valleys in your carpet and you're getting seasick just looking at it, or if it's a trip hazard, there's a real good chance that your carpet was never stretched in tight enough to begin with. You see, whoever stretched your carpet the first time around more than likely didn't use a power stretcher. Now what a power stretcher is, is a pole that it butts up against one wall on one side of the room and this pole runs all the way across the room to a head that's on the other side. And when we push down on this handle, the carpet gets stretched and it gets stretched so tight that we have no doubt at all that we're going to be able to live up to that unlimited unconditional lifetime waiver guarantee. That carpet will never ripple up again. You have my absolute word of honor on that. And if I'm wrong, we'll do it again for no charge at all. When we stretch carpet in a room, it's always best to have the room completely empty. We can empty the uh, furniture out of the room for you if that's what you need. But more often than not, the customer will want to get as much as possible out of the way. Now, don't strain yourself. Don't go moving a giant king-size bed or a, a dresser that weighs you know, more than 10 elephants. You know, that's, that's not cool. We have special tools. We have these sliders that we can put underneath the legs of the furniture. So you, even, if, uh, even if your dresser weighs a couple hundred pounds and it's harder than heck to move, we get those sliders underneath there and we can move that stuff around if, we, if, we, if that's what we need to do. So don't strain yourself moving the furniture. Also, if you have a king size bed and it's just completely unreasonable for whatever reason to move that bed, quite often we could stretch the carpet in that room without moving the bed. It's a lot more work. Those poles that I spoke about, they go actually underneath the bed. So we stretch the carpet right underneath the bed to the other wall. And it's a lot harder. It takes us a lot more time and effort, but it can be done. So that's a little bit about carpet stretching. We use a power stretcher. We don't just kick it in with our little Susie Homemaker little knee kicker. And uh, it leaves a little bit of extra carpet at the end. We cut off that excess. And you'll see how much carpet we cut off when we're done. We throw it in a bag and we, we tuck in the carpet along the edge and boy, life is good. It looks so much better. One thing that you might be aware of when we finish though is if you had large ripples, the carpet could be soiled along the top ridge of those ripples more than at the valleys. And that makes sense where you're walking, that's where it's going to get more dirt. So after you stretch the carpet, it's a real good time to have uh, the carpet cleaned. Also, the carpet's out of the room. And I mean, <laughs> the furniture is out of the room, and it's just a great time to clean the carpet. It looks a lot better at that point. Mind you, like I said, this is unscripted, so I'm just going to talk to you about carpet repair. Now, let's talk about Berber carpet repair for a minute. Berber carpet repair has rows. Well, Berber carpet has rows. And actually, the word Berber carpet, or the name Berber, it isn't exactly accurate. Berber carpet actually comes from a place out in the Middle East the country or countryside where they, the area is called Berber, you know, the, the Berber people or something like that. Anyhow, it's a, it's a very expensive rug, Berber rug. That, that's the actual meaning of the word Berber, Berber rug. The Berber carpets that we find today are very similar. They're, there's loops and there's rows. And if you pull on one of those loops or one of those loops or rows, becomes unglued somehow, it can make a run, what we call a Berber run. So when you pull on that, that thread, it, it, it's like it's unzipping right in front of you. It's like, oh my gosh, what has happened? I've got this zipper run going all the way across the room. Now your higher end carpet, higher end Berber carpet, that doesn't likely happen. It almost never does. But the lower end, middle, middle of the road and lower end Berber carpet runs all the time. So when we fix a Berber carpet, what we're going to want to do is take out the bad area and patch a new piece in there. Sometimes we could actually weave a little bit of some new loops right, right into the place where that carpet has come unfurled. Um, but more than likely, we're going to want to put in a Berber patch in that area. One reason that Berber uh, comes apart at the seams is because the carpet was never sealed at the seams well enough to begin with. Your carpet installer that originally installed that carpet was supposed to use a latex sealer 
or even a glue gun or something to seal the edges of the carpet. Now, if they don't seal the edges of the carpet, that's one reason that Berber carpet is going to unfurl like crazy. So when we put in a patch or fix a Berber carpet, that area gets sealed. Now, we give the unlimited, unconditional lifetime waiver guarantee on Berber carpet as well. But mind you, just because, uh, say, well, well, let's say you have a 12-foot seam and we fix three feet of it, that's the part that we guarantee. The rest of the seam we're not going to touch. And you may have a problem with that in the future. And that's certainly not our business to cover something we've never actually um, worked on before. Now, after uh, Berber carpet patching, I'll just talk about carpet patching in general. And this includes the Berber. When you call us to have your carpet patched, the first thing that we're going to ask you is if you have any extra carpet to do the patch with. If the answer is yes, well, we're golden. We're ready to do the job. If, if you say, no, you don't have any extra carpet to do the patch with, we'll ask, well, can we take the carpet from a closet or maybe even from underneath a piece of furniture? Because we can, what we can do is we can take a piece of carpet from a closet and patch it right into your damaged area. And it, it usually works out really well. Um, most people would rather have a piece of carpet missing out of their closet then have a terrible, nasty area in the middle of the room where they'll see it all the time. After all, inside the closet, you usually have that covered up with shoes and old photographs and baseball bats and everything you've ever collected in your life. Um, more about carpet patching is if you don't have the carpet to do the patch, there's really nothing I can do to help you. So you're going to need to find that carpet to do the patch with before you bother having us come out there. Because if we don't have the carpet to do the patch, we're stuck. We're, our hands are really tied. There's nothing we can do. Now, you're probably wondering how the patch is going to look when we're finished. It's real hard to say, especially in a recording like this. So just between you and me and a million of our closest friends here watching this recording through time, um, that patch is likely to be visible. You see, if you take a piece of carpet that's never been walked on, it's never been soiled, it's never seen the light from the window coming in so it hasn't faded out, and you take that brand new looking type of carpet or piece of carpet and patch it in to an area that has been worn, it has been soiled, it has been faded out by the sunlight, well certainly you're going to see the difference between the new carpet and the older carpet because it's patched right in the middle there. Certainly, it's going to look a lot better than the situation you probably have right now, but patches are visible. Another reason a patch might be visible would be because, well, thick carpet, thick nap or plush carpet, hides the seams quite well. A short nap carpet, like a Berber carpet, for example, or any of the commercial type carpets, they're very short nap. They show the seams far more. Um, Another thing is, is that the rows have something to do with it. When we cut a carpet with the, in the same direction as the row of the carpet, well, those seams are, by and large, less visible than the seams that we cut that cross the rows. When we cross the row, well, it's unavoidable to do that if, if that's what we have to do to do, make a patch. And those seams stand out a little bit more than the ones that go along with the rows. So. Um, Carpet patching, that's what we specialize in. We could absolutely do that for you. Have the carpet available for us. And um, we also back up our patches forever, just like everything else, just forever and ever and ever. That patch will never come up. Um, after patching, well, we could talk a little bit about pet damage also when, when we talk about patching. If you have an animal, a dog or a cat, um, or I've even seen uh, where it's been a, it's been a bunny or um God, a few other animals that have actually gotten locked behind a closed door, what will happen is they'll get that separation anxiety and they'll try to dig their way out and they'll just rip the heck out of the carpet. That's one of the main reasons we'll do carpet patching. If that's the case, well, certainly it's just like any other patch. You supply the carpet, we'll put it in. Um, however, if that animal didn't tear up the carpet, if they actually urinated on, on the carpet, there's a whole other thing we can do about that and I'm going to need your help for that. What we'll do is we're going to ask you to go to the pet store or go online and buy twice as much of a product as you think you're going to need, maybe four times as much, to actually kill the odor. 
Now, the product I'm talking about is actually an enzyme. And what we'll do is we'll pull back the carpet, we'll remove the padding, clean the floor, and you'll pour this enzyme onto the floors underneath it all. And that enzyme will eat up all the um, proteins that contribute to the smell of the urine in your carpet. Then we'll put in new padding, and you'll pour that enzyme cleaner all over the backing of the carpet as well at that time. I'll reinstall the carpet, and then one more time we'll use that cleaner and we'll just soak that area of the carpet with that enzyme one more time. And that's likely to kill the, the scent altogether. That smell should be completely gone. If not, it's probably because your animal found another place that you don't even know about, and I'm sorry about that. Uh, there's nothing we could do about your animal. Um, now that we've spoken about pet damage, I like to talk about carpet to floor transitions. A lot of people call us because they put in a new floor. Maybe it's a tile or a wood floor and their carpet now needs to be finished along that edge. More often than not, we don't need to put in any kind of metal there. Um, there's a lot of different types of situations where you do want a metal. If you have an apartment building and you want the carpet to last a long time, between the carpet and, say, for example, a linoleum floor, we could put some metal there. There are flat metals. They're the type of metals that um, they're called, um, I've called them beat-down metals before. I'm not sure exactly what they're called. Beat-down metals, they're gold and they're silver. And the, car the carpet goes right in there and it gets hammered down. It gives a nice clean edge and it protects the edge of the carpet for a very long time. Um, but if you're like most homeowners, that's not why you're calling us for a transition. You're calling for the transition because you just put in a nice marble or travertine floor, or maybe a wood floor. And so what we'll do with that is we're going to pull back the carpet and put in a new tack strip right up alongside that floor. Now that floor is going to be holding the place as if it were a wall. So here's, here's your floor, here's your tack strip right in front of it. We're going to pull the carpet over that tack strip and tuck it in right there. So all you're going to see is a nice smooth transition between the carpet and the floor. Now, many times when you put in a new floor, it's important to put in some work into the subfloor underneath. And that might include using a hardy backer or some other type of uh, material that rise, raises the floor up even higher than it would have been. So let's just say, for example, you've got a half-inch new tile and another quarter-inch of underneath there of a hardy backer, or it could even be more. It could be three-quarters of an inch altogether, or even more that is higher than the carpet. That's extreme. It's usually not that high. But let's just say it is. If we just bring the carpet up and end it right there, well, you're going to stub your toe against that thing. You're going to be cursing to holy high heaven every time you do that. It's just not fun at all. Trust me, it's not you'll understand if you ever do that. What we're going to want to do in that case is one of two different uh, solutions. We're going to do one of two solutions. One is we can pull back the carpet quite far and use a product like a Fixol, which is a very fine cement type product. And we're going to feather or feather in a nice r r ramped area so we ri raise the level of the floor slowly up to meet it. What's great about that is the floor and the carpet will be at the same level then. You won't stub your toe. What's not so great about that is when you're walking up that little ramped area, well, you feel like you're walking uphill. There's really no way around that that I know of outside of pulling up all your carpet and floating a whole new layer of concrete, you know, self-leveling concrete on the entire concrete floor and underneath. Um, that's a lot of work. It's possible that would be the um, perfect way to do it if well, if I were working on a $10 million home in Beverly Hills, that's probably what I would be doing. I would be raising the entire floor to be level with, uh, so the carpet could be level with the floor. But here in the real world, what we'll normally do is rise it up with some Fixol, or we could do it even easier. We could use shingles, cedar shingles. Cedar shingles are about that long, and that makes a nice little ramp up. And it normally works just beautifully. It's quick, it's easy, we can get it all done in one trip. So we're going to raise the level of the carpet right up to the level of the floor, and you're just going to be happy as can be about that. Some transitions are uh, round, curved. Other transitions could be squared. We can do, there's a hundred types of transitions out there. And 
if you look on the internet under carpet to floor transitions, you're going to see a lot of examples. Perhaps even on my website, you can see some other examples. And so when you call us, you can explain what you're dealing with, and that would help us with the program here. Stairs. So, do you have a problem with this, the carpet on your stairs? I did a job like this just today, where the cat had actually torn away the corners of almost every stair all the way up the stairway. The lady was not happy about this. Um, the my, my solution to this was that, well, first of all, I asked her, do you have any extra carpet? And the answer was yes. You can take the carpet out of a closet. And I told her, well, you're going to have carpet missing out of a closet. And she said, well, that's fine. You can put this carpet in the closet. So she had something that didn't match at all. And she didn't mind because, well, she just didn't care that the carpet in the closet didn't match um, halfway through. So I took the carpet out of the closet, and the first thing I did is I completely replaced the first two stairs, because after all, the first stair or two wears out faster than everything else anyhow, and those first two stairs were pretty trashed. Instead of just fixing the little corners, just replace the entire stair if you can. It'll make a world of difference to have something new there. With all the rest of the stairs, I just did these little, little bitty patches all the way up one side and all the way down the other, and it was just beautiful. I think it gave her... Um, probably another 10 years of life to her carpet to fix those stairs. Another thing you could do with stairs, what some of my customers have done, and I love this idea, is replace the entire stairway by, well, let me back up a little bit. Let's just say you have a three or four bedroom house, and it's the same carpet throughout the entire house, and your stairway is pretty much in the middle of it all. And if you replace the carpet on your stairs, well, it's going to be a slightly different color than the rest of your carpet, and that's going to look low class. And we don't like that, do we? No, nope, we don't. Um, what I would suggest in that case is that we take the smallest room in the house, maybe a small bedroom or nursery, and um, pull the carpet out completely from the smallest room in the house and, and buy new carpet for that room. Then we have maybe a 12 by 12 piece of carpet and we can replace the entire stairway with that carpet. That way it matches the entire rest of the house except for that one room. That'll easily save you five, four, five, six, seven thousand dollars right there. Um, and it's a lot less work too. So I like that idea. You get a whole new stairway. A lot of people, you walk in the front door and there's the stairway right there. If the stairs look bad, it's hard to recover from that first impression. So take my word for it. That's a really great way of going. No stairs. Commercial carpet repair. If you have commercial carpet and that needs to be repaired, it either has ripples and waves or it needs a patch. If it's rippled, it might uh, need to be stretched. We've already talked about carpet stretching. On the other hand, it might, need, might have a different issue. It could be your commercial carpet was glued down to concrete to begin with. If that's the case, what we do is we actually take a knife and we just cut right down the middle of those ripples, right, cut right down those bubbles, and we will re-glue the carpet right underneath there and smush it all down, and believe it or not, those bubbles are going to be completely gone. They might be completely invisible when we're finished. You won't even see where we cut it, because where we cut it is exactly where we put it back together. The carpet will be nice and tacky before we um, push it back down. It's a great solution. But if the carpet needs to be stretched, well, we have to get the power stretcher out, and, and we'll fix it up that way. Now, if your carpet in your commercial uh, building, say you have an office, is because, say, let's just say that you removed a wall between two rooms. If that's the case, you may have a strip of carpet that's missing. It's always a great idea to um, just get a completely different color. So if you have blue commercial carpet, go get a piece of red or black. Just something completely different because a strip, a patch going all the way down through the middle of the room that's just a little bit off, it looks low class again. But if we put a strip of red down the room or burgundy or black, people walk in and they go, oh yeah, these people have got some class. they got a decorative idea. So that's just my opinion. Use a completely different color if it's something goes all the way across the room. Now if it's just a patch, a small patch for whatever reason, and you have a little extra carpet, we can always patch it in with whatever you have. Uh, seam repair. Good news and bad news. The good news about seam repair is that we can make your carpet so the seam doesn't keep getting worse. The bad news is that if it looks bad now, it's probably not going to ever look good again regardless of what we do to it. Seams 
have to be done properly the first time. You see, when we seam a carpet together before it's installed, we'll use a straight edge and we'll cut down both sides of the carpet and then we're going to seal the carpet on both edges and then we're going to seam it together and it'll be perfect. When it's completely cooled down, then we stretch it in. If we go back and try to open up the seam and cut that carpet off and try to bring it together, the chances of it ever looking better are right around zero. So I'm sorry to tell you that your seam repair, we, we can make it possibly look a little bit better, we can make it stop getting worse, we can make it not be a trip hazard any longer, but don't have your expectations too high when it comes to seam repair. The last thing I want to talk about is flood, flood damage. Now, if you're watching this right now and you've got a flooded out carpet, you are in a world of hurt, and I'm sorry. The first thing I would do if I were you is probably have a, about three fingers of scotch. <laughs> and then I would go ahead and get a, uh, an extractor, uh, like a hot water extractor. You could rent them at the, um, just about any rental yard and just start extracting all the water. Pull back the carpet, get rid of all the padding that's underneath your carpet. Um, rent a couple of blowers or as many blowers as you need and these things they kind of look like a snail as a matter of fact that's their nickname in the field we call them a snail and they're shaped like that and boy do they ever blow and you can blow dry the hole underneath of your carpet set it up and get the carpet completely dry at that stage that's when you call us and we can uh, supply new padding put a new pad reinstall your carpet clean the carpet for you if you're in an area that we do carpet cleaning and life is good. You can put your furniture back and you'll be happy again. Um, you don't have to do it yourself. If you want to call a company, even ours, uh, depending on your area, can do that extraction for you as well. Now if it's really flooded, I mean seriously like you're ankle deep in water, don't, don't even bother. It's, it's beyond almost everybody's ability. That, uh, that means that your baseboards are all going to be all wet. Uh, a professional company will come and remove your baseboards, and we don't do that ourselves. They'll remove your baseboards, they'll drill holes in the wall, attach blowers to your walls, and blow dry the entire area inside the walls and out, the, the carpet, the floor, the whole shebang. Uh, and then we can come in and put the carpet back down at that point. So I hope that I've answered your questions. If you have any additional questions, now that you've heard me talk for the last, I don't know how long, feel free to call me here at the office. I'd be just tickled pink to hear from you. If I'm not here, one of my assistants, whoever answers the phone, will be well trained and will be able to answer any questions that you have about carpet repair. And then at that point, we'll be absolutely positively honored if you would have us just come on out to your place and fix your carpet for you. And that's all I have to say. Again, I'm Steve Gordon and I I promised I wasn't an actor, and by now you believe it. I'm a carpet repair guy, and I'll be looking forward to hearing from you, so please call me. Thanks. Bye-bye.